Hey there, fight fans. Kimberly Sargent here with Inside Punch on InsidePunch.com. Joined by the former heavyweight UFC champion, and I like to say Division One collegiate wrestler. That seems to be more important now these days than anything. Cain Velasquez, welcome back to Atlanta. How excited are you to be back here? I'm excited to be here. Um, it's a great city. Um, a lot of stuff to do here. And, um, you know, can't wait to kind of so someday just kind of, you know, do my own thing and uh, to just explore the city. Well, you are brought here by Metro PCS, which seems to be the hottest sponsor nowadays. You know, you are everywhere. You were back here before with Frankie Edgar shooting a commercial. Tell us a little bit about Metro PCS. Uh, Metro PCS is, is a great, uh, you know, company. You know, um, one of the biggest right now that, you know, is, is, is doing things with the UFC. And I'm definitely happy to be a part of it. You know, um, you know they're uh, just, I think, involving more of the fans. You know, um, one of the companies involving more of the fans um, in their sponsorship, where you know people having uh, Metro PCS um, on their phones. You know, will actually have special content of us training, interviews, um, stuff like that. So that really gets them involved. It seems cool. I feel like they are, they're stepping up. There's theres competition, of course. There's the T-Mobile, there's the Verizon, but they're coming out with the hottest phones. I'm not an iPhone girl. I'm a Droid girl. So Metro PCS, right up my alley. Is that how, how you feel? Definitely. You know, um, they got, you know, really great phones, 4Gs, uh, you know, the great picture quality, you know, pretty much have everything and, you know, for, for just a great price, you know, and um, I mean, that I think that's, that's really good for, for people nowadays, you know, to have uh, good phones with uh, great prices. Definitely. If Metro's in your area, make sure you check them out. Well, your last fight, you just came off of a nice, nice victory against Bigfoot Silva. Walk us through that. Um, you know, with Bigfoot, you know, we've had two guys um, in our gym to, to fight him already. So we kind of knew um, what he did. And um, just one thing that we saw early on, especially with, uh, with uh, versus Bigfoot and uh, Daniel Cormier, um, is he likes to kick early, especially, you know, down to the legs and everything else like that. And, you know, that being the case when, when we're really dry, you know, just, we just said, Hey, you know, if he does that, we'll just catch a leg and, you know, try to take him down. And, you know, we did that right off the bat. He kicked, uh, low, took the leg, you know, took him down. And, um, you know, in that position, um, I know he's durable, you know, we've had uh, a couple guys hurt him early on and try to finish in the fight. And, um, you know, it, it didn't happen, so just, you know, picked my shots here and there, just got an elbow and, you know, cut them up pretty bad, and that was, that was pretty much it. Definitely a solid win, which justified another rematch for the title. How do you, you know, it's tricky a little bit to me. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the sport. Usually when people get rematches, they did five rounds. They went five hard, crazy rounds. It's usually like a Frankie Edgar, which I know you work with Metro PCS, and Ben situation, and it's, ah, uh, did the judges suck? Or did he really win? You know, yeah. how do you justify that to yourself when you lost first round? But obviously, you are one of the top contenders in the division. You know, um, you just don't think about that. You know, don't think about hey, trying to live in the in the judges' hands. Um, I'm just a fighter that goes out there and tries to finish fights. You know, um, just put all I can in, in, into each round, and um, you know, just hope for the best. And that, that's it. That, that's pretty, that's pretty much all you can do. You know. Well, you do have this rematch. Let's touch on that a little bit. So the first, that's your only blemish on the record. I mean, that's that's a solid record. And you actually, it's funny, I didn't realize that you started in the UFC 2-0. and That does not happen now. You need to have like 15 fights <laughs> to even hate, say hey to Data. So yeah. that that's huge for you. You know, what do you think, I, I know you came off a of surgery, you know, torn rotator cuff, which is, uh, that's a rough, yeah. that's a rough injury. Do you think that played any part of the loss? Not making excuses, but do you think that played any any part in that? You know, to be, um, you know, to, to not have a fight in over a year, uh, to go in. And, yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough, you know. Um, I like to to be healthy, you know, when I'm training. Um, you know, with a shoulder injury, of course. I mean, there's some stuff I couldn't do. So some stuff, I, you know, I, I couldn't do when, when I was uh, when I was actually training. So, um, you know, but, yeah, no excuses, you know. I mean, me, and I mean, ev every other fighter can, can, you know, can say the same. Hey, you know, if it's we have a fight date. We're going to make the fight, and, you know, that's it. It's just the, the fighter in us. We're going to go out there and perform. Well, how are you going to change things up? Obviously, you know how the first one went. You know how you came off your injury. He uh, apparently, I think, had a quarter zone shot in his knee, so he had a little, you know, downfall on his side. How are you going to approach this one? How are you going to go into that one thinking a little bit differently? 
Um, you know, this time, you know, we obviously had, you know, had a game plan last time, but I, I didn't follow it, you know, I kind of just hesitated, just, just a split second, and, you know, in that split second, of course, you know, um, you definitely saw what happened, so, this time, um, going out there, you know, just fight my, my usual fights, go out there, uh, push, push the face forward, and attack him, you know, we didn't do that last time, and, um, you know, that's my style of fighting, and, uh, you know, that, that's what I'm gonna do. Todd Duffy, you actually trained with, he's, he's one of our guys, you know, I mean, he's your guy now, but <laughs> Todd Duffy used to be a local guy here in Atlanta. Yeah. How was it like training with him, and, you know, do you see him getting back into the UFC? I definitely do, you know, Todd Duffy has um, lo a lot of talent. Um, he's a big guy, he's athletic, you know, he hits hard, um, he's good all around, too. Um, I definitely see him, you know, getting back to, into the UFC if, if uh, he wants to, you know, um, definitely... Um, he's going to keep winning, you know, he's young still, and, um, yeah, just, um, I mean, the guy has a lot of talent, so, I mean, I definitely see, you know, big things for him. Well, in December, after this fight, I actually had a chance to catch up with Alistair Overeem. I uh, covered an event in CFA in Miami, and he said as soon as he's off his suspension, which conveniently is after your guys' fight, mm -hmm. which is December 29th, my birthday, make sure you, that's a birthday present, I want that present, you better win, <laughs> um, he said he wants Junior Dos Santos. I mean, I don't know if he's saying he's assuming Junior Dos Santos is going to win, but he's saying that's who he wants to fight. Who do you think should get the next title shot, whoever wins? Um, you know, for that, I mean, it's up to, to the UFC to decide, you know. Um, you know, definitely, you know, uh, it all depends on, on uh, the fight versus Dos Santos, you know. Um, that's pretty much all I'm, all I'm thinking about, not who should get the shot afterwards or what. I mean, I'm just, yeah. You know, I want Junior. I want to beat him, and that's it. I can't wait. Um, before I let you go, I kind of want to touch on the Mexican heritage. You're you're headed actually to an event today, which is it's going to be mainly you know the Mexican heritage. My co-host is a huge boxing fan, mm -hmm. so to him, Mexicans love boxing. Yeah. You're making Mexicans love MMA. Yeah. How do you attribute that to it? You know. Um, it's just, you know, just the sport itself. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, where you come from. You watch the UFC, not even knowing the rules, you, you'll, you know, automatically get attached to it. I mean, there's, there's just so, it's just so exciting. There's so many aspects of the sport. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's it, you know. It's just so exciting. You can just watch it and be like, hey, you know, there's punches, kicks, knees, elbows, you know, takedowns, everything. And, um... I definitely have seen, even in, in, in Mexico when, I, when I've gone down there, you know, the fan base has, has definitely grown, and, you know, they're just big fans of the sport, and I just see it grown continually everywhere, you know, and in every country, it's just grown. I want to add in the last question, is a fan question. I noticed that all of our videos, you always have the people that are supportive, and then you have the haters. I call them keyboard warriors, because... Yeah. I train. I've been training since like 2004, and I know that there's some fat girl on the other side making fun of me, talking crap. And we found a good question. Through all that, we found a really good question from a fan out there. His name's Dave Robertson. He's local. And he wants to know if indeed you do walk away with that title on my birthday, would you fight your teammate, Daniel Cormier? You know, um, Daniel is, th is thinking about coming in and going light heavyweight, you know, uh, if, when, when he goes in, into the UFC. Um, you know, for that, it's like he's a friend, he's a coach, he's a teammate, you know. Um, man, if you want to see me and him fight, come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the San Jose. <laughs> we, we fight those days all the time. You can come in and watch. Um, so, yeah, we fight all – I mean, we, you know, we're training partners, so we fight all the time. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it, you know. He's – He's a great friend of mine. He's my coach. And, I mean, that's it, you know. That's a no. That's a no. I mean, <laughs> you know, don't want to fight him. I'm not going to. Um, but I think he is. He might be going down, you know, to light heavyweight and, um, you know, definitely do big things there for sure. Well, I can't wait. You heard it first. He's not fighting him. He's walking away with that title on my birthday, December 29th, for Kane Velasquez. I'm Kimberly Sargent and Metro PCS. So nice to meet you. Thanks so much for tuning in to Inside Punch on InsidePunch.com.